Hey guys, Mark from Performance Auto Center back with another video. This time it's one of your requests. We're going to show you guys how to do the elusive spark plug install on the Kia Stinger 3.3T platform. Now we're going to have a timeline in the description below if you guys want to look around and find certain parts of the install that help you the most. But first, we're going to start by going over some of the tooling that we're going to need to help you guys get the job done at home. Okay guys, so if you're gonna be tackling this job at home, these are gonna be some of the tools you're gonna to need to complete it on your own. Now we're gonna start in the order of uh, disassembly here and we're gonna start with the coil packs. Now, in order to get the connector off the coil pack, you're gonna need either a very strong thumb and index finger and you're gonna to have to squeeze, hold tight, pull and release and we're gonna show you how to do that on the car as well. Or if it's uh, full of dirt and debris and it's having an issue coming off, you can use a small flat screwdriver like this and just slightly pry on it, not too hard because plastics are delicate and that should release off the boot no problem. Now, once you got the connection off of the actual coil itself, you're gonna move over to a socket set and you're gonna grab a 10 deep or 10 short, whatever works for you, 10 millimeter socket, 3 8 drive, quarter inch drive, whatever you have available to you at home. And you're gonna wanna unscrew the mounting bolt for the coil pack itself. There is one per coil, or there is one per coil, right? One bolt per coil, 10 millimeter bolt that you're gonna wanna undo before removing the uh, coil itself. So once you have the coil out of the way, you're gonna move on to removing the spark plug itself. And to do that, you're gonna need a 5 8 inch spark plug socket. You'll see that it's extra long to accommodate for the length of the spark plug. And it has a little rubber insert to help hold on to the spark plug once you've unscrewed it and you gotta pull it out of the bore there. That's really handy. And this one here is the same style socket. It's a 5 8 inch socket, but it's double ball jointed here at the top as you see here. Now this is a special trick tool that's gonna help us get to the real problem cylinder uh, on this car. The one that's laid right underneath the, uh, the intake plenum. And you'll notice it's very difficult to get to with any standard tooling. And that's why I really suggest you guys save up and buy a tool like this. It's gonna save you a huge amount of time and headache when you do this job as it's able to pivot into the position that's required to get that spark plug out of that tight cylinder board. Um, or not the cylinder board rather, but the spark plug board. Um, and to drive these, you can use any sort of 3 8 ratchet. You're gonna need a few different extensions depending on which cylinder you're working on. And then when you go and throw it all back together, there's no guessing here, you're gonna need a 3 8 drive torque wrench. Now this is gonna be set to manufacturer spec. I believe it's 20 or 25 foot pounds. I gotta go check the computer because there's no guessing. Over torquing is a very real possibility um, to people who don't know how material feels when the threads get pulled and et cetera and other feelings. So using a torque wrench is gonna guarantee you that you're not gonna go and pull the threads on whatever you're tightening. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to invest in a torque wrench. Now, you're looking at a couple of other things over here that I haven't gone over. We're gonna start with this gapping tool. Now, this is from Berger Motorsports Tuning, and this is specifically designed to hold the spark plug for this vehicle, and it allows you to unscrew and re-screw in an adjustable screw here that presses up against the electrode strap on the spark plug to close the gap, and we're gonna demonstrate to you uh, how to do that afterwards with an actual spark plug. And uh, right here are our feeler gauges. Now these are, uh, oh God, I'm having trouble opening them because they're so lubricated. But the, uh, the point of these, these are in thousandth increments uh, from 20 thousandths of an inch upwards to 40 thousandths of an inch. And the reason for using these is it allows you to measure tight tolerances, such as the one between the electrode and the ground strap on the spark plug. Now, if you watched our previous video, we had adjusted the spark plugs to 22 thousandths of an inch, and we confirmed that gap by using this tool once we adjusted the strap with our Berger Motorsports gap tool. Now, once you have your gap set on the plug, one of the more critical points of this install, you're gonna wanna move over to what, uh, I guess, additives or other, uh, things that you could use in the installation that will make it easier come maintenance time when you have to either replace the spark plugs again or just go in and replace other parts in the area. Now, the first we have here, this one's gonna help you reinstall the coil pack boots really easily. It's a little bit of white grease, 
I'm gonna show you where to apply this to help it install go a lot smoother. The second one here is some anti-seize. You're gonna apply a light coat of this to all the threads of the spark plugs. This ensures that there's no bonding going on between the two separate materials of the cylinder head and the spark plug. That way when you go and pull it out next time, you're not pulling threads, it's not seized, and it comes out in one piece. And the last and likely most overlooked piece, it's just a little bit of a guarantee of safety in essence of connection, but it's dielectric grease. Now, the purpose of this grease is to allow any sort of air gap in between the top of the spark plug and the bottom of the coil pack, that connection there, this grease is a conductive grease that fills that gap just in case the cap doesn't actually fit on the spark plug or have complete connectivity. This allows it to still transmit electricity and get that spark without having to worry about perfect fitment on top of the actual spark plug. And that's pretty much it. All the rest of the stuff you see here, it's all for quickness and ease of access, but you can very well do it with just some manual ratchets, some extensions and sockets. You don't need no fancy tools here other than this tool right here, this double ball jointed 5 8 spark plug tool. This one, I swear, when you guys see how much easier this tool makes this job, you're gonna be wowed. So now that we've gone over all of the tools that you're gonna need to tackle this job, we're gonna let the car cool off and go play a game of cards. All right, bro, pick up two. Are those even the rules, man? Like, whatever. Pick up six. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, now that we're done playing games, let's get to the install how-to. First, we're gonna start by taking off the engine cover. Let's get that out of the way. So once you get your engine cover off, you're gonna have to find and designate all of your ignition coils. Now, if we take a look here on the driver's side, we're gonna find number one, two, and three clearly marked with the white dots, so you guys can see them. Three, two, and one right there, marked with the white dots so you guys can see them. I'm gonna move over to the passenger side. Now this is the trouble side, that, uh, where that socket's gonna come handy later. And we're gonna identify these here. We have one, two underneath the intake here, and number three located tightly back here. Very tough to see, but we're gonna get to it right there. You're gonna see that's the final one. Now all of these are fairly simple to get to, except this one here, where that 5 8 double ball jointed socket is going to come in handy. So let's pull one of the coils off now to show you how it's done. All right, so we're going to start with the number two coil, since it's one of the most easily accessible ones on the vehicle, and we're going to show you how to take it apart now. So first we're going to start by removing this little safety clip here. You want to grab it from each end, squeeze a little bit, and you're going to wiggle your way back. Some of these are very tight and delicate, but they do come loose with a little bit of elbow grease. And once you get it pried back just about an eighth of an inch, about a quarter of an inch, you're gonna press down firmly and you're gonna pull back. It's gonna come off just like that. Now you're gonna see, if you look in closely here, there's a 10 millimeter mounting bolt back there beside my thumb. That one there, this one here, is retaining the coil to the valve cover. So we're gonna have to remove that 10 mil bolt with a 10 millimeter socket and probably a combination of extensions. And uh, then we can remove the actual coil. So let's uh, get that out of there. Okay, and once they're loose, you can definitely get them by hand, but if you have a magnet, that helps way more. That's your mounting bolt. And now what you're gonna wanna do, is you're gonna firmly grasp both sides of your coil pack, like so going to wiggle and pull up at the same time. And it'll slowly work its way up. Now you're going to have to watch for other wiring in the way, but the boot is pretty flexible, so that shouldn't be an issue. You're just going to wiggle your way out. And now you have your ignition coil removed. Now that we got the ignition coil out of the way, we're going to move on to removing the spark plug. And to do that, you're going to need your 5 8 spark plug socket. We're going to place this on the spark plug push down firmly to make sure it's seated all the way, and then we're slowly gonna turn back with our 3 8 inch drive ratchet until it backs out of the cylinder head nice and slowly, ensuring we're not pulling the threads on our way out, as if you have a high mileage vehicle, you're definitely gonna have some difficulty removing these. So take it nice and slow. Let's see how it's done. 
So you can see here as I'm rotating, I'm trying to find the edges and now it's gonna go down a little bit. As you can see, I just pushed it down firmly onto the spark plug. Make sure you're on it all the way. Make sure you're on the spark plug as much as possible. And you're gonna wanna add on a short extension to that. Now we have accessible room to get the ratchet on and we're slowly gonna pull. And most of them, if they're maintained, should come out by hand threading. If it's uh, old and deteriorated, you may need uh, to use a ratchet, but for the most part, this is how it should come out if it's maintained correctly. You're gonna see we've already applied anti-seize to these. That's another one of the steps we're gonna show you how to do in order to have them get uninstalled or, or have them uninstall so easily when you have to do the maintenance on your particular vehicle. But if you see here, you're gonna see a slight glaze on there. That's the anti-seize uniform. Once it's uh, been adapted to heat, it liquefies a little bit, but we put the coat on anti-seize there to allow it to come out. But now that we've got the spark plug out, you can see here, the spark plug, the electrode ground strap, the electrode itself, and uh, we can move on to showing you now the importance of the spark plug gapping. So let's move over to the tool bench and we'll show you how to gap the spark plug. Okay, now that you got the spark plug out of the cylinder head, we're gonna show you guys how to gap it to the correct spark plug gap. First, we're gonna use our Burger Motorsports spark plug gapping tool, and we're gonna insert and thread in the spark plug into that fixture, like so, until it bottoms out all the way into the tool. And then you're gonna slowly screw in the set screw until you just barely touch the ground strap here and then we're going to slowly and incrementally turn in the set screw now this is barely going to take much guys so as soon as you feel some resistance you're going to want to go just past that point and back off and then check your measurement okay so if you've done everything up till now correctly you should have the similar results to what you're about to see here now this is the 22 thousandths of an inch size feeler gauge and this is the just gap to 22 thousandths of an inch spark plug and I'm going to show you how to insert it here to check for that clearance or that tolerance. You're just going to see how it barely you'll feel that gap and if you just press on the electrode ever so slightly it just slides in very easily like so. You can see it overhangs and that's how much it should be. There should be no back and forth up and down slop or slack. You shouldn't be able to move the feeler gauge within that gap but do pay careful attention to when you're inserting the feeler gauge into this gap because if you force this in and it presses against the electrode you will break the electrode tip and that's not going to have any sort of benefit at all if anything it'll be a hindrance to the performance of the spark given by this spark plug so be sure to pay careful attention that you're not damaging the strap here by over bending it and bending it back multiple times. You're gonna to wanna to do this in one go. And the second point is to be careful of that electrode tip because you don't wanna do any damage to that either or else you're gonna experience some other issues under high performance, high heat conditions. Okay guys, now that we're back at the car, we're here on the passenger side and we're gonna show you guys how to take out those trouble coil packs that are on this side. The driver's side isn't as involved and there is a lot more space to work, but as I'm sure a lot of you guys have looked up on the forums, this is the more difficult side of the two. Now, in order to get the coils on this side off, you're going to need another special little tool that will make your job much easier. And it's this quarter inch drive, 10 millimeter socket that is attached to a flexible U-joint. It's built in to flex upon this joint here. It allows you to get into tight spaces very easily. And you're gonna see here how I demonstrate just how much easier this little tool makes the job. We're going to follow the same procedure here as before. You do have to remove these little safety clips in order to undo the connection to the coil. Now this one may require two hands. You can squeeze down here and they come off nice and easy. That's all it takes. That's off and out of the way. You can remove the 
mounting screw for cylinder number four ignition coil. Get that out of the way. And then we can slowly work cylinder four up and out. Remember to always wiggle it as you go. Don't just blindly pull. Wiggle it as you're going out and it'll make its way up just like so. And now that we have all of this area here freed up, we can work on the more space uh, starved cylinder five ignition coil here. And we're gonna grab the flexible 10 millimeter socket again. And then we'll show you guys how to get this out and back in in a breeze. So now that we have the number four ignition coil out and the mounting bolt for number five out, we're gonna remove the number six ignition coil, which is gonna give us access to the harness that connects to ignition coil number five. Now this ignition coil for number five, the one that's placed underneath the intake here, that's gonna actually exit through the rear. And we're gonna demonstrate to you how to do that now. So first we're gonna remove the cylinder six ignition coil. We're gonna remove the connector off of this coil here. Again, and move it out of the way, like so. Even though it's pretty short, so there's not really many places to put it. So you're gonna to wanna to squeeze between here and here. You're likely gonna to have to use 3 8 drive. I mean, uh, quarter inch drive. or with a magnet and you can retrieve that bolt and then we can slide out number six okay that's number six out of the way okay so now that you've removed the number six ignition coil you're going to want to undo the clip on number five I'm just going to slowly work it back So you hear that clip, you're gonna see it's undone. You see that gap? You see it? No? Yes, maybe. But anyways, as every other uh, connector, you're gonna do that safety, squeeze, and gently pull back, and now you're disconnected. Okay, get that up and out of the way. Now, to get this coil out of the, out of the engine here, you're gonna have to flex it towards the rear of the engine bay. So you're gonna see that the coil is pretty flexible. It has a three-piece boot. It's built to flex slightly, not completely, but slightly. And you can work it, if you bend and pull up at the same time, you can slowly work it out towards the rear. Now, it is common for these to split on their way out. As you're gonna see here, it's split. But do not worry, because these are just push together, push to fit, plug and play type parts. And we'll show you how it goes together in a second. So now we've got this top half off. It's gonna be a little bit more difficult to get the bottom half out of there. But if you reach in with your finger, you should be able to work it out just like this. Now, your coil is out. All right, so we're back on the passenger side of the vehicle now. We're gonna show you guys how to remove those difficult spark plugs with this double ball jointed spark plug socket. You're gonna to wanna to use this in conjunction with a six to eight inch uh, flexible uh, relief extension. As you can see here, it has some uh, reliefs cut into it to allow the, the socket to pivot on this end. Now that's gonna add some more movement in the engine bay that's gonna give you freedom to get into that tight space and remove the spark plug a lot easier. So let's get in there and I'm gonna show you guys how to wiggle this in there and get that spark plug out. All right, so we're just gonna focus on the more difficult one of them, which is number five. And you're gonna wanna just slowly take it down into the cylinder and just rotate it till you feel it seat. Just like that, see how we can't turn it? That's seated right on top of the spark plug. It's all the way in there. And we're gonna grab our 3 8 ratchet. We're going to back it on out. There we go. And you're gonna slowly back it out. Like I said earlier, 
This one might be a little bit more difficult, but you can definitely get in there with this double ball jointed socket and flex extension. It does make it a hell of a lot easier to get into that space. Now that we've gotten it loose, we can remove it with our hands because it certainly isn't that tight. As you can see, it's gonna come out nice and easy, albeit a little bit deformed because of how many flexes are on this. But I'm just gonna turn until you feel it have some play, indicating that it's loose and out of the threads. And you can gently pull up once you've turned all the way out. So we're just gonna make sure we're all the way out here. And then we're gonna pull up nice and gently so not as to disturb anything here. And you can see you've got your spark plug out. This is the most difficult one on the engine. And if you can make it through this one, the other five are of So take it uh, with a grain of salt. This tool definitely does the job a lot easier than a standard tool. You're gonna notice if you try it with standard tooling, it's not gonna happen, guys. So I really, really recommend Take the time and money, invest in some good tooling because it's going to make this job a hell of a lot easier for you when you go and do it in your garage at home. So let's move on to the next part. We're going to show you how to put it all back together. All right, so let's show you guys how to put it back in. Once you've gapped your spark plugs like we taught you and showed you earlier, we're going to reinstall these with a light coat of any C's on the threads, just like so. That's all you need because as you turn it in, that compound is gonna travel all across those threads. You don't need to paint it, you're not Picasso, you're not Leonardo da Vinci, this isn't the Mona Lisa, guys, okay? But you just need to give it one little light coat and you're ready to screw it in. So let's go in there and show you how. Now it is gonna be a little bit more difficult to navigate because of the weight of the spark plug, but if you just use your finger and some patience, that sounded horrible, but if you just use your finger and some patience, you could definitely wiggle it in there and you're gonna see you're down there. Now, one thing I do want to stress that I should show you guys prior, let me pull this back out because it's worth the two seconds now that I remember to show you because I've seen it happen on other applications and I'd hate to see it happen for you guys at home. But all spark plugs have this little washer here at the bottom. Okay, you see that? Now this has a tendency to become kinked like this. Okay, now what ends up happening is if you go and thread in this spark plug, and this washer isn't perfectly flat against the surface. When you go to tighten it down, you're gonna begin tightening it on this angle and you're gonna deform this washer and you're also not gonna have a fully seated spark plug because then you're gonna feel the resistance of this washer bending as tightness when realistically there's still a gap here, okay? So you wanna ensure that this washer is not stuck in a fixed position. You want it to be flush and flat because then if you go and tighten it like this, you're not having a truly seated spark plug. You're literally just crushing and deforming this washer in this fixed state. So please make sure it's nice and flat and then reinstall. Get back over here. We're gonna jimmy this in nice and easy. Again, with this tool guys, it makes it a breeze. I'm telling you, you're gonna go and start it all by hand. There's no tooling necessary here guys. When you're putting it back together, it should all start by hand. If it doesn't start by hand, don't put it back together. That's incorrect, okay? These are all designed in order to go together with minimal, minimal effort, unless it's specifically designed not to, but this is a routine maintenance item. This stuff should go together, no issue at all, okay? So once you get to the point that it's bottomed out by hand, you're gonna see in a second, I'm gonna stop turning because I can't uh, spin this any longer. But once it's bottomed out by hand, you're gonna go and grab your torque wrench, and then we're gonna show you guys what to set it to, how to torque it, proper torquing technique, because there's also incorrect torquing techniques, and then you can reinstall the coil pack and move on from there. So let's get the torque wrench. All right, so here we got our 3 8 torque wrench, and we're gonna set this to 20 foot pounds, which is the approximate conversion from the 20, five or so newton meters uh, the Kia service manual recommends. So we're gonna convert that to foot pounds because that is what my torque wrench is measured in. We're gonna set it here to the 20 foot pound mark, dead on zero. And we are going to insert it into the extension. And now a few key points you wanna be sure with here guys. You're gonna to want to ensure that this extension here and the entire system 
is as straight down to the floor as possible or as straight down uh, perpendicular to the cylinder head as possible. And you're going to want to pull and torque in a singular motion. That's when you're going to stop. All right, now we're going to release and we're going to pull back again, nice and gently. And you hear that click? That's it. We're done. Okay, so now that the spark plug's properly torqued, you can remove this tool. If you want to have any personal confirmation, grab a regular ratchet just to let you, or to help you sleep at night rather, in case you don't believe your torque wrench is correctly calibrated, but just go with a regular wrench afterwards and just give it a tug. You're not gonna feel any sort of give whatsoever at that torque, as it's already bottomed out and it's seated perfectly into the bore. This installation here of this spark plug is complete and you can move on to the remainder of the spark plugs in the same fashion using either this tool here to gain some space, or you can use a standard straight socket to achieve the same result, uh, except on this particular uh, cylinder. So let's uh, show you guys how to install the coil pack back on this one, because it's a pretty tight space. And uh, we're gonna use this white grease in a way to help make it a little bit easier. So come and we'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we're gonna take a little dab here. And we're just gonna put it all along, just a light glaze, it doesn't gotta be a lot, just a light glaze. And these are the part, points of contact that are going to be the highest points of resistance when you're reinstalling. All right, so we're going to go back in the same way we came out from the rear and be very careful not to separate the boot as you're pushing it back in. So you're going to guide it in with your finger and you're going to be pressing, you're going to be pushing towards the, the driver's side of the vehicle as you're guiding this in. So please make sure you guys are pushing in towards the driver's side of the vehicle as you're pushing this in. So we're gonna work it in, like so. Taking care not to separate the boot. And then we're gonna push down firmly until it's seated on the spark plug. And then you can reinstall the mounting bolt. Line it up with the bolt hole, like that. And then we can go back and grab our 10 millimeter flex socket, tighten it down. And that's it. All right, you guys are probably ecstatic now that you got that really difficult ignition coil installed back in there. Just like your friends told you, you probably couldn't do on your own. Well, with the right tools and the right know-how like we showed you today, you've likely gotten this job done and we're glad we're here to help you. So if you have any other questions or comments about this installation or any other issues, drop us a line below and we'll do our best to help you guys out. Until next time, I'm Mark Performance Auto Center and we'll see you again.